Hi everyone and welcome to this just over an hour long real-time tutorial on how to paint a building and its reflection in water. I'm going to use my giant pastel painting of Portrush Harbour which will hopefully explain a lot of the techniques that I used across the whole painting. So if you're going to paint along I'll include the photo reference. I would suggest to choose a small area of the painting and have a go at that, do some experiments. Uh, maybe you can paint along with the building that I'm going to work on. And the materials I used are Hanamul velour paper. I source these large 40 inch sheets from Dakota Pastels in the US. But you can also use a different pastel paper to work along. And I'm using mostly unison colour pastels and some Faber-Castell pit pencils. And I'll share all the colour codes as we go. Hope you enjoy the tutorial. And now starting off with Yellow Green Earth 4, I begin to pick out some of the framework on this building. And the building that I'm working on here is Portrush Lifeboat Station and you can see the lovely orange lifeboat over to the left. And it's a really interesting looking building, quite simple, uh, rectangular shaped, nothing too complicated going on so a nice one to demo this technique on. But also the way it sits out over the water is lovely, it's on stilts out into the water so you get some lovely reflections going on underneath the building which we'll get to later on. But my main focus when looking at this building is choosing where is in shadow, where is going to be hit by the sunlight. So you'll notice the difference in the colour values that I use on the shadow side of the building. And I've already put the buildings behind this one so that this one will overlap those. And you can see that I'm just trying to get a nice clean edge along the top of the roof. I'm just marking in the framework, the green colour. And you can be quite precise with the bigger pastel sticks. You will see me use a lot of pastel pencil in this to neaten things up and make some lines a bit more crisp. But most of the time it's just those smaller pieces of pastel looking for the sharp edges. And then I can always come back in with the pastel pencil to neaten that up. I know that many of you may not have ever painted a building before or even water reflections. And I hope that that's something I can bring you through my Patreon channel uh, to really broaden your uh, subject matter and help you explore and experiment different subjects other than just animals as until about nine years ago, I really only painted animals with no backgrounds and I really shied away from painting landscapes or any kind of background really. And it's only when I put a lot of effort into that side of my painting skills that uh, I really discovered so much that I was missing out on before. And just learning more about colour values really helped me uh, across the board in many different subjects. I find that some of the skills I worked on back then can be applied to any subject matter when you start seeing things just as shapes and form and uh, value. So I hope that this tutorial will help you uh, explore water reflections especially as they are a great way to loosen up your mark making. I'm really inspired by the Impressionist painters and I found that learning how to paint water was made so much easier by looking at some of their work. Just noticing the types of marks they made. 
not worrying so much about being uh, neat and controlled. You can really loosen up your marks a lot in water. But I also like then having the sharp contrast above the horizon where you get all the detail in the buildings in contrast to their watery reflections. And here I'm just using the pastel pencil to mark in some of those small windows along the top of the building. All the windows in this painting were pretty small and fiddly. And I make use of the pastel pencil to give them a little outline before filling them in. And now I pick up some grey 8 for those, well, white panels on the side of the building. But in actual fact, you can see that I need to go a lot darker, saving white for the front face of the building. And really, I'm going much darker than I need to. I will come up a few values by the end. But it's always good to go darker than you need first as those colours will shine through your next layers. And if you're using a good pastel paper, it will allow you to apply those lighter layers on top. I always try to add more layers of colour rather than just trying to apply one thick layer of one colour. It gives it a lot more richness and depth. And now this red 3 that I've used throughout the painting, I've used it to add little touches of vibrance. I've outlined many areas which are being hit directly by the sunlight with this orange. And I'm just double checking that my lines are all nice and vertical here. When you look really close up at my buildings, they are all a little wonky. Uh, there are no really precise straight lines. Windows aren't quite the same size. Lots of little differences and imperfections. But the full effect altogether means that it doesn't really matter. And I try to be as precise as I can be on this scale. Again, using the pastel pencils just to block in those front two windows. And now with a really nice sharp piece of yellow 12, I start to pick out the front of the building. So the tricky thing when you're drawing out buildings is just to be aware of your perspective lines. It's always good practice drawing things like this as you can double check it with rulers and use a grid even to keep you um, within your horizontal and vertical lines. But it's even more important when you're painting reflections below that all your lines will match up. And here I'm just trying to make some small adjustments to the shape of the front of the building. And like with every subject matter that I paint, the edges are so important. So with a building like this that's sitting in front of buildings in the background, I really want to make sure that 
all those edges contrast nicely and it really looks like there's distance between them. And although these panels around the edges of the building are all the same colour of green, that yellow that I'm using on the front, that will really make that green on the front of the building seem like it's been hit by bright sunlight. Whereas on the side of the building I'm using a much, much darker green. There's a lovely dark doorway on the front. Again, I can use my pastel pencil. But I'm not too concerned about the edges as I still have to come in with my white. And I can neaten all of those lines from the other side using the lighter coloured pastels. And there's a lovely area of darkness just under this building. And that dark contrast that splits the building from its reflection will really make those highlights pop. So now for a little bit of white. This is Unison Grey 28. And you can see it's a very small, small piece of pastel. I have lots of little crumbs. I probably have more white crumbs than any other colour. Just for jobs like this, it always seems to be highlights need to be very small marks. So make sure you save all those little pebbles when you get down to the end of your pastels. Don't throw any of them out. If you can manage to hold it between your fingertips, it's going to be useful. And you can see already just adding some of that white onto the front face of the building gives us that effect of the sunlight hitting the building. It always seems a bit like magic when you add highlights. But you also need to be patient and really work at your darker values first. And don't go too bright too soon. But with a building like this, where there's such a bright wall, it's often good to get that brightest value in quite early so that you can measure everything else off of that. So you can see that nothing goes on right first time. I'm always applying the pastel, coming back in, pushing it around into place and neatening up my edges, then coming back in with more layers of colour. So it really is a gradual process on each of these buildings. But I think it's so interesting to see how great and versatile pastel is as a medium. People often associate it with uh, animal portraits because of its soft qualities and the fact that it can represent fur and hair really well. And also for people portraits, uh, you can achieve really beautiful soft skin tones. But I don't think that's its limitations really. Um, 
I see pastel used in all sorts of different subject matters and in very precise ways right through to really loose painterly styles. So to me it's just as versatile, if not even more so, than oil painting. And now I come in with a lovely light blue additional one and bring those side panels on the building up another value. But you can see that my grey 8 that I applied here earlier still shines through this layer a little and gives it a bit more texture and depth. And now that I've got some of those panels roughly blocked in, I pick up the black faber castell stick, or just something a little harder than the soft pastels. And I want to get some of that dark contrast that I mentioned earlier in underneath the building. So you can see that that harbour wall continues underneath the building. And the building itself is on little stilts which disappear into the water. So at this stage I'm at least trying to firm up that bottom diagonal line of the building. And you can see that I work pretty slowly. I think Everyone's always a bit surprised at how long things take to do. And I often get asked, how long does this take you to do? And am I working too slowly? And I always say, no, you cannot work too slowly in art. I just think things take as long as they need to take. And if you want to achieve a really high level of detail or you're going for realism, then you really need to put the time in and uh, work more slowly and it's more about working thoughtfully, really considering your marks rather than um, applying lots of pastel and filling the paper too soon. So I come back in again with some white and further brighten that front face of the building. So you can see that I never really put down a very thick layer of pastel. I'm never leaning too heavily. Each layer I put on is quite thin and it gets blended into the paper. So I never end up with a huge amount of pigment sitting loose on the top of the paper.
And that's really the last thing you want if you're trying to post your pastel paintings um, or you just want them to be uh, able to be framed nice and cleanly. And it's all of these extra things, um, like not applying the pastel too thickly, mounting your paper onto something firmer, lots of things that can help the longevity of your pastel work. And just picking out some of the posts, the wooden framework underneath the building and the little ramp that comes down at the front of the building and disappears into the water. And now back in with yellow green earth 4 again just to strengthen some of those darker green lines on the side of the building. And the reason I think I put the, the dark lines in first is it's much easier to come in with the light colour in the bigger squares and neaten up all of those edges from the other side. So like here with a nice sharp piece of pastel, I can really get those edges nice and crisp. And this little bit of pastel has been used on its side, probably when uh, blocking in some sky area. And they always make great tools for uh, sharp lines and small details afterwards. So I save up all these sharp shards just for these jobs. So you can see this time when I come in with my additional one, nice light blue, I'm leaning a little bit heavier and really taking the value of those side panels up a notch or two. I don't want to make them too bright. You can really see the difference in their values in the photo reference. But I want to just get all those panels nice and crisp.
and now to work on that row of small windows along the top of the building. And I'm using a little bit of red 13, a lovely orangey red that I've used so much in this painting and it contrasts so well with all of that bright blue. And I've picked up a bit of my A1, starting to fill in some highlights on the windows. Some of the light reflecting off the glass, but then also in some of the windows you can see in the photo reference, you can actually see, I think it's right through the building to some of the brighter buildings outside behind. So I want to add a range of highlights along these windows, but they're so small that it's really just a small dot here and there with a nice sharp piece of pastel. And then coming back in with the pastel pencil just to shape the outline of the window again. And now with that nice sharp piece of yellow 12, just picking out some of the brightest windows. And as soon as you do that, it really transforms those boxes that we just drew onto the side of the building into little reflective see-through windows. And now round to the front door to add some of those little details. There's a red boy or something like that sitting at the door. And I use some red 9. Followed by orange 6 just to add a little highlight to where the light is hitting that shiny boy. And you'll see me add a few more of those boys later on when I'm working on the water reflections. And it really is about the smallest mark that I can make with a pastel. But I'm never too worried because I can always get a nice sharp pencil and come back and shape it into place. So even when working on this tiny scale, it's still possible with the big fat pastels to get the small detail. But my advice would be if you're going to try out this project and maybe just work on this building and its reflection, I would do it um, much bigger so you could perhaps go to uh, A4 size for the building and its reflection. My overall painting was 40 inches wide but Still, each building within the painting was so small and fiddly to work on. <laughs> 
So I would always advise working a little bigger in the beginning, give yourself more space and, and not have the same need to go into as much fiddly detail. Just by doubling the size of this building, uh, it would become so much easier to work on. So for the next few minutes, I'm just adding some finishing touches to the building itself and then we'll be on to the watery world down below. So we've skipped along a bit further into the project and you can see that my water over on the left is really starting to take shape. And the first thing I do when I start working underneath this building is using my black Faber-Castell stick, start to block in some of the really darkest shadows as there really are some very dark areas in there. And throughout this half of the tutorial, you'll see the direction I make my marks is really important when painting water. You can see over to the left, I've made many, many little horizontal marks. And you'll see how I use that technique soon. At the moment, just picking out all of those dark, shadowy areas in underneath the building. But down below where my arm is, I've built up a bit of a rough gradient in the water. So you can see that the the shade of blue gets much lighter as it comes up towards the building's reflections. And I really just used a dark 18, a very dark navy blue on its side. And then coming up the range of blues into BV17, BV10, BV9, and the whole way up through a range of blues until I'm able to meet it with my much lighter blues in the reflections.
But each small area of this water took me a long time. Um, each day I got perhaps four or five inches worth of reflections painted. So it was really laborious. It took a long time. But don't let that put you off. Uh, this was a giant project and I took on a huge scene. If you're interested in trying out reflections, take a much smaller subject matter, perhaps one boat and its reflection, choose something a lot simpler. I've even had some lovely uh, animal portraits with water reflections. So it's a great thing to be able to paint and very enjoyable too. Now with some little pieces of BE8 and BE15, just picking out some of that back harbour wall. And you can see there are some places in there that the sunlight reaches. And they'll show up really nicely contrasted against my dark black areas in there. But again, always coming back in with the pastel pencil and neatening up those lines, keeping everything above the water nice and crisp. And now I come in with my yellow green earth 4 from earlier, from those panels on the side of the building. And I try to run my eye or my hand down from the lines and then continue that line down in, into the water. So it's really important that those lines match up. And then just trying to find the top line of the roof of the building as it tapers back towards the harbour wall. So you can see that the tilt of the roof above the water as it goes back towards the harbour wall. I must try and create a mirror image of that down in the water. And sometimes it's even helpful to look at it sideways I can sort of see the shape of a butterfly when I look at this building and its reflection sideways. And it's just making sure that it's symmetrical when you look at it that way up. But really important is to get those vertical lines coming down into the water and continuing vertically. And now as I start to add in some of the marks to indicate the roof of the building, you can see that I'm not using a sharp line, creating a solid band of colour. It's much more broken up. And also continuing some of those dark lines from the harbour wall down into the water. And 
And it really just took me a long time sitting, looking very closely at the photo reference, trying to understand what's going on in underneath the building. Just looking at it as shapes and blocks of colour. And using some BE36, just starting to block in the reflection of the doorway. At this stage, I'm really just plotting out where each item's reflection should appear. And like before on the actual building, not committing to any light highlight colours just yet. Just plotting out the main framework and blocking in my darks. And now with some yellow green earth 9, starting to pick out the green framework on the front of the building. And you can see as I drag that line down into the water, I start to make my marks small horizontal shaped marks. You'll notice a lot of the time when I'm painting water, I might make my initial line like this vertically, but most of these marks to indicate the, the surface of the water and the small ripples, I try to keep everything horizontal marks. And this was a great day to photograph the harbour. Everything was so still and calm. It's not often that you see it looking so peaceful and empty. But it was just perfect for showing up all those colourful reflections. So each little dark line underneath the building is going to have its own dark reflection coming down into the water. And I'm using a piece of orange 6 here just to start and bring some of that white front of the building down into the water. But something I want you to bear in mind as well is that quite often the building or whatever it is in its reflection won't look quite as bright as it does above the water. So you want to keep things just a little duller in the reflection. And I will come in with some white on top here 
but just having this orange six in there first will add a bit more warmth in its reflection. And you can see how I'm creating the shape of that front of the building all the time using these little horizontal lines to indicate the flow of the water. And in that way, it's not really unlike painting fur, where you're really trying to notice the grain of something, the direction of a flow, and make your marks follow that. And as we get to the top of the building, or the bottom of the reflection here, things sort of taper off into the blue of the water, so my marks get a little looser towards the bottom of the reflection. And even all those little warm highlights using the orange above the water, little hints of that added in using my lovely vibrant red nine. And I love adding little splashes of really vibrant colours into things like this. It can be kept to a minimum, like here, just little splashes of vibrance. But I always try to really heighten the colours that I see in my photo reference. Really trying to remember what the colours were like when I was there in person. And now coming in with a little tiny piece of white. Just bringing out that reflection a little more. As it really does shine quite brightly just because of how strongly the sun is hitting that front of the building. But I can let little bits of my orange sticks shine through there. And the most important thing is just, again, to make sure that all of those areas above and below the horizon line match up. So don't allow the door to be slightly to the left or right in the reflection. It will really throw the whole effect. Just be careful when you're plotting out your reflections that you keep drawing a straight line with your mind or even use your hand to draw an imaginary line down from the door or the window and make sure that it lines up nicely in its reflection. And nothing in this watery area has a perfect outline. So everything's a little wavy. And I notice at this point that I haven't made quite a dark enough line up the building. I actually noticed this dark line in the reflection and when I went to look for it on my building above the water, uh, it wasn't quite dark enough. So I can make that small adjustment at this stage. And now for the side of the building. Like before, I pick up my grey eight and block in some of those panels on the side.
and this time I probably won't bring the grey 8 up much lighter. As I said, the reflection tends to be a bit darker than the building above the water. And you can see when I compare the side of the building in its reflection with the blue water colour surrounding it, the building is actually much darker. So I want to make sure that I leave this dark enough that when I add the lighter blues around it, there will be a good contrast between the two. So it's all about comparing each colour to the other colours around it. Judging them off one another, making sure that you get a full range of tonal values within your painting. And just as with any dark marks above the surface, any little highlights or light areas above the surface will also get a little stream of reflection coming down into the water. And again, it's bringing the line down in a vertical way, but using little horizontal marks. And that really is my main trick to painting water. Just keeping the marks quite uniform and it really depends on the type of water that you're painting. If there are more ripples, more movement in the water. But the general rule that works on any sort of water reflection is to really try and create that mirror image. So if the line above the horizon is vertical, really focus on getting it the same in its reflection. So for a couple of minutes I continue picking out some small splashes of colour and highlights in underneath the building. And now picking up some yellow green earth 18, I want to strengthen some of those green lines down the building. As I said, the reflection is usually a little darker. And so I just want to strengthen some of those areas.
just making small adjustments to the shape of the front of the building. You can see how little pastel pencil really I use for this amount of small detail. Especially when it comes to the water reflections. Most of that really is done with the bigger pastels but broken into smaller pieces. And I dropped so many pastels on the floor while I was painting this, it makes a big difference to me standing to work. But it was never a bad thing as each time I ended up with little shards that I could use for windows and other small details. Again, just really trying to make a mirror image of everything I do. And there's Harry McClary saying hello in the background. It's feeding time at the zoo here. So there really is a lot of darkness in this area, just in the shadow of the building. And I want to be sure that I've got that contrast in there before coming in with too much light colour. And this line that I'm creating now is the reflection of the harbour wall just to the right of the building. And you can see that I need to taper that line back towards the right. So it's not a vertical line like the lines of the building because the wall itself tapers away. But again, the good trick is to look at it sideways and check if it's symmetrical. And I back in with my yellow green earth 18. Just strengthening the dark areas along the top of the building. And picking out more of the green framework. So everything's a lot more broken up down here. Using those horizontal lines. But overlapping all of the colours as I go. And now with BE36, just a little hint at some of those dark windows along the top of the building. And it's really nice when you're working on reflections just to try and loosen up a bit with your marks. Not everything has to have a nice crisp edge. It's really lovely just being able to lay down little marks of colour and without blending or touching them too much. How the whole effect when combined together, really does look like it's wet.
And I'd start to come back in around the top of the building with some BV8. And again, no crisp lines. Just gradually feathering the colours into one another. All the time using those horizontal shape marks. And just trailing off some of those highlights from the front of the building. Then I can meet that reflection with my lovely vibrant blue from the water below. And that's how I sort of join the two worlds. So the foreground water where you can see that it's very deep. But bringing your eye up towards these reflections along the surface of the water. And the grey 8 colour is about as light as I will go on the side of the building's reflection. And just now trying to make a little more contrast between the building and the blue colour below. But I really find reflections so interesting when you zoom in on them on the photo reference. They can look so abstract. If you took a crop from a photograph like this and just painted the reflection, it could really appear like an abstract painting. And it's a great exercise just to focus on your mark making. And of course, your colour choices, as always, they're so important. And again with that BV8, just bringing some of the blue up into the bottom of these reflections. And you can see the really fine mark I can make with this lovely sharp edge of the pastel. With pastel pencils I just couldn't get this strength of colour. There's such a vibrance to the soft pastels. And the softer you go with pastel, uh, the more pigment you'll get on the paper. But I do love the unisons in particular because they are soft and buttery, but at the same time I can break them into these tiny pieces and not have them turn to dust in my fingertips. So you can still get a lot of control even though they're soft enough to produce a lot of really vibrant pigment. I'm just going back over some of the smaller details like around the door. Just working at that loose edge between the building and the rest of the blue water.
And the last thing I'll show you here in this tutorial is how I created a couple of the little floating buoys on the surface of the water. Once you get your reflection in, it's always quite satisfying to add some little detail sitting floating on the surface of the water. It seems to bring the whole effect together and make you realize that you're looking at a big shiny mirror. So the scale of little details like this in this particular painting was uh, pretty ridiculous. I was working with the tiniest pieces of pastel here that I could possibly hold. So if you're working a bit bigger than this on one particular building, you'll find it much, much easier. But the idea is to get that little ball sitting on the top of the water and then a little hint at its mirror image down below. And I'm just trying to add a little dot of highlight on the left side of the ball just to give the impression of the sunlight hitting it. Then I can use my pastel pencil to try and crisp up the edge around the boy. And I go back to this one quite a few times just trying to neaten it and get the highlight just how I wanted. Sometimes you get them first go no problem and then other times it's a little trickier. But as always with pastel there's room to maneuver. You can undo something quite simply and have another go at it. Or like I'm doing here, just keep tweaking at it gradually until it's the shape I want it to be. And the second boy just beside that, I sort of plot that in with a pastel pencil first. And then coming in with my lovely vibrant red nine, just adding a good dot of that colour. And then a, a small final highlight just to show where the light is heading off that shiny boy. And that's us nearing the end of this hour long tutorial. I hope it has given you some good pointers to go away and try your own water reflections. Just having a go at different subject matter will really improve your art across the board. And I find I had so much more enjoyment for painting all these other subject matters once I tried. So have a go at something different and I look forward to seeing some of your buildings and watery projects in the near future. Happy pastling!